Hello everyone, I'm Kaori Nagai. I'm a graduate student at Chuo University. I would like to talk about the new micro simulation of the 2018 Sunda Strait tsunami induced by Anakurakata volcano. These are the contents of today's presentation. In December 2018, a destructive tsunami was induced by Anakurakata volcano's eruption in Sunda Strait, Indonesia. In the Sunda Strait coastal area, more than 400 people were killed by the landslide tsunami. Moreover, it is difficult to predict a non seismic tsunami. Then there is a possibility that the lack of tsunami warning may have led to many human casualties. According to a field survey conducted by Muhai et al., the tsunami impacts were large in the coastal area of Banten, and the maximum flow distance was 330 meters. The interviews were conducted in the southern coastal areas of the Java Island by one of the authors. About 50% of subjects evacuated because they were promoted by adults, and a quarter of them evacuated after seeing the tsunami. As shown in the results, many local residents evacuated after the tsunami arrival time because of the lack of the non-seismic tsunami warning system. The new micro simulation of the 2018 Sunda Strait tsunami induced by the volcano eruption was conducted in previous studies. Some researchers estimated the landslide volume and geometry change of the volcano using satellite imaginary. Hakosun et al. determined the best fit landslide parameters after the eruption using a global optimization method. At the moment of 2018 eruption, the tide gauges at each area in the Sunda Strait indicated that the initial water elevation was between 0 and 1.5 meters. Therefore, it is important to evaluate the tsunami impact due to the initial water level differences. As I mentioned, many people may have evacuated after seeing the tsunami in the event, so there is a risk of increasing the victims due to the inundation area's variance. The purpose of this study is to investigate the landslide tsunami impact on the coastal areas in the Sunda Strait due to the changes in the initial water level. Moreover, we evaluate the variance of the mortality rate in changing the initial water level. I will explain about the combination of the new micro model used in the present study. In the two layer model, Landslide tsunami was simulated and output the inundation depth. By passing the information of the depth and date of elevation to the multi-agent model, it is possible to simulate the elevation action. Next, I'll explain the equation of the two-layer model used in our simulation. The model solves non-linear shallow water equations with kinematic and dynamic boundary conditions. To simulate tsunami induced by submarine and subaerial landslide, it is necessary to consider the interference between the soil layers and water layers. This is the study flow of the present study. Firstly, we simulated landslide tsunami using two-layer model and evaluated the tsunami impact of each coastal area due to the variance of initial water level. Next, we conducted the evacuation simulation using the multi-agent model in the Tanjong Lesson, the southern coastal area of the Bantam, where there were resort and residential areas. This is the topographic and bathymetric data provided by Batanas Indonesia. The right table shows the output points of time series of simulation data. The tidal gauge measurements were obtained at the four points, then we compared that with simulation results. I will show the setup of the simulation of the Toreya model. According to the tidal gauge measurement, the initial water level at the moment of eruption was different in each area. Therefore, we changed the initial water level every 0.5 meter between 0 to 1.5 meter in the simulation and validated the fluctuation of the tsunami impact on the coastal areas. Regarding to the mass collapse, Hakosun et al. applied the global optimization method using the DE algorithms. 
to the two-layer model and determine the optimal land slide parameters. In the present study, we use the best fit parameters derived by the Pakoksun et al. Here, this is the simulation results. The upper figures compare the time series of tsunami amplitudes with the observation at the point of Marina Jan and Perabhan Panjan. Then, there are no tidal gauge measurements at the point of Tanjung Lesson and Yujun Kuan. As a result of the initial water level changes, the tsunami arrival time was roughly the same time, and maximum tsunami heights were larger as high as initial water level. The direction of the mass collapse was southwest, so the southern coastal area of Banten was damaged by the landslide tsunami directly. I will show the inundation area in each area for the in initial water level. The left histogram is the inundation area in the black boxes of each area. The right histogram shows the increased inundation area when the initial water level rises to from zero meter. The TLS area is located in the volcano collapse direction, so the tsunami height was relatively higher than in other areas. The inundation area for initial water level of 1.5 meter increased by 1.688 square kilometers compared to that of 0 meter. Regarding the PLJ area, the inundation area increased by 1.263 square kilometers when the initial water level rise up to 1.5 meter from 0 meter. The location of the PNJ was relatively far away from the volcano. However, there are wide areas with lower elevations than the initial water level, so the inundation risk was relatively higher. There is a similar risk in the Kutagun and Tanjo Lesson where there is flat land. Next, I will show you the inundation area in the TLS for an initial water level of 1.5 meter. As a result of the simulation, it was revealed that tsunami arrival time at Tanjo Lesson was earlier than other points. Then, as shown in the right figures, you can see the increase of inundation area at the north area of TLS where there is a low elevation area. Moreover, in the event, there are many visitors in the Tanjung Lesson Resort. The many visitors were killed by the tsunami due to the unreal of the tsunami. Next, we conducted the evacuation simulation in the area to evaluate the mortality rate for the change in the initial water level. I will explain about the setup of the multi-agent model. According to the simulation result of the time series of wave amplitude in the Tanjung Lesson, the tsunami arrival time was 1,680 seconds after the eruption. The initial positions of evacuees are located at random. I will show the simulation result of evacuation simulation and the special distribution of tsunami height from the time of tsunami arriving. The white cycles in the right movie are evacuees and red cycles are deaths. The evacuation start time is the tsunami arriving time. Here, this figure shows the maximum mortality rate at each evacuation start time for initial water level. The mortality rate was increased by at least 8% for the initial water level of 1.5 meters the that of zero meter in the evacuation start time is the tsunami arriving time. To prevent the occurrence of the death in the case of 1.5 meter, evacuees should start 400 seconds earlier than, than, than the case of zero meter. It was reported that many people evacuate after seeing the tsunami in the event. Therefore, if the initial water level was higher than that of the actual event, there was a possibility that more people were killed by the landslide tsunami in the area. But finally, we start to discuss the tsunami hazard in the coastal area of Sunda Strait. From our simulation results, 
It was revealed that the number of deaths may increase due to the condition of initial water level at the time of disaster. There is a high risk in flood areas such as Tanjo Lesson because of the high increasing rate of inundation area. I will show you the suggestion of the tsunami warning system in Tanjo Lesson. Based on the simulation result of evacuation simulation, evacuees need to start until 20 minutes after the eruption in the case of initial water level of 1.5 meters. We should evaluate the evacuation action in the other area because of the differences of topographic characteristics and tsunami arriving time in each area. In 1883, the Krakatoa volcano erupted and induced a large landslide tsunami in the Sunda Strait. The many people were killed by the tsunami in the coastal area. In the future, there is a possibility of the risk of a Krakatoa eruption, and more destructive damage will be occurred in the coastal area due to the mass collapse volume, initial water level, etc. We suggest a strategy for the non-seismic tsunami. First, it is essential to conduct construct of non-seismic tsunami warning system. Second, construction of a dike along the coastline and evacuation tower in a flat area. Lastly, movement to the inner regions with consideration of the local people's lifestyles in Japan. The location of settlement to the high elevation regions was conducted to reduce the future risk of tsunami. There are many resorts and residential areas in the coastal area in the Sunda Strait, and the population density was high in the flat area, so it is important to conduct a strategy for the inundation in such flat area. This is the conclusion. Thank you for your attention.